What's up you guys, so I'm here with a new video today, I'm here to bring you guys a deck profile you probably thought you'd never see here on my channel, uh, and that is Mermails, you guys. Uh, first and foremost, this is not my deck, this is actually my little brother Jerry's deck, and he just did not want to profile it, so I am profiling it on his behalf. Uh, I know you guys are always looking for something new and something, you know, just different uh, here on the channel, and I've never profiled Mermails outside of the YCS Tops uh, players that I've profiled over the years. Uh, I have never actually been a true fan of this deck, I'm just telling the truth, I've just always, you know, combated against it. And, you know, I feel like this is a deck that no matter what, it's never really going to truly die. People are still going to play it. People are going to stay loyal to it. And there is going to be new Mermail support coming out. As you guys already know, if you guys have been uh, paying attention to some of the other channels, they've been talking about it. And this is all uh, pre that, all pre the new support and whatnot. And so the, this deck will definitely change, but I wanted to showcase it for you guys. It's something different. Those of you that are Mermail players, you know the deck better than I do. Any suggestions are always welcome. And I just hope you guys really enjoy the profile. So... We're going to get into it, and I'll do my best to explain it, uh, even though I am not a Mermail expert at all. I just have played against the cards. I know uh, what the majority of them do. So, of course, it starts with 3 Megalo. Self-explanatory, just your beat, one of your beaters of the deck. You know, just being able to pop off a monster, attack twice, it just, it's crazy, along with three Teus. I mean, these are like your combo starters. I mean, uh, Teus is just insane. You know, now that I got the reprint, everyone can pretty much build Mermail. It was like pretty much the hardest card to get. It also can make your rank sevens if those even come up. Uh, he does play links in this deck, just letting you guys know, so you actually do uh, utilize your extra deck. Uh, I know Mermails have done it in the past. A lot of times, though, you could just win just beat, you know, just beating face with these guys. Like, they're insane. Insane. So um, just self-explanatory stuff there. And then uh, other Mermail is uh, just one Gundy. It does have the recursion effect. Uh, you know, ditching it off of Teus and ditching it off of uh, Megalo is just awesome. You know, being able to get back another monster. Uh, so that's pretty much it for, like, the actual Mermails. Uh, pr pretty strong, you know. Uh, Mermails, you know, it's just like standard stuff. Uh, I don't think any of this will change. This might change in the future with the new stuff that's coming out. Uh, apparently, it's going to be playing Nimbles is what I've heard. I don't really know that much, but uh, those of you that are more familiar, you can let me know. And then the best card, and also, in my opinion, one of the most annoying cards in the deck, uh, Three Prints. Uh, I'm not going to, you know, as much as I don't care for this deck and this card, i got to give it up. This card was one of the strongest additions to the deck when it came out. It's just insane. You know, it does everything you want it to do, and it's just such a solid summon. So this card, of course, is just going to be a staple at three. You guys know if you follow Japan, when this card got released, Mermail started topping all over again. And I feel with the new support, uh, what people do with the deck, if they really put time into it, I feel they we're going to see the deck uh, do wonders again. So three prints. And then uh, the two and twos, we have the two infantry and the two marksmen to pop your face-ups and pop your face-downs. You know, just good cards to discard with uh, Megalo and Teus. So they're just really solid. They handle anything that's really in your way. And then, of course, the godly Atlantean, the two Dragoons. I mean, this card is just nuts. If this card ever came to three. I mean, my God, it was crazy enough when it came to two. But you guys already know people were innovating the deck with Swap Frog and all that stuff. And, I mean, Dragoons is just so solid, being able to just do what you need it to do. So this card is just nuts. If you guys have noticed, his rarities are really, really nice on this deck. That's how you guys know it's not mine because Lord knows I don't play the best rarities. And then a one of the one godly Diva. And actually, my, one of my favorite cards, believe it or not, is actually Mullen Glacia. Now, I'm not a big fan of the Mermail deck, but I really do love this card. I think this card is just insane. I think it looks awesome. And I think the fact that it rips two cards out of your opponent's hand is just crazy. Uh, so, yeah, he's playing all that. Diva, of course, being a tuner, opens up your plays. You can make really cool stuff. Like You, you guys already know a lot of the, like, the Mermail monsters. When we get to the extra deck, we'll talk about it. But these cards are just really cool. I love Deep Sea Diva. I played Diva back in, like, the, what is it, the, when we played Destiny Hero, uh, absolutely. Or not Destiny Hero, uh, Elemental Hero Absolute Zero, when we played that deck, uh, just how insane D.Va was, just being that miracle target. And then, of course, Mullen Glacier, I've already explained, just actually one of my, probably my favorite card in the deck. And then uh, for the other uh, cards for the deck, we got three Gamma Seal. This card is just nuts because it's a water. What, you know, what else, What more could you need? And it also is your out to Masterpiece. It also is the weakest Kaiju. So literally running into it is not a problem at all. I really like this card in the main deck because it makes it to where any problem that's in your way, you literally just slap a Kaiju over it and you continue your plays. So I really like there's three of that in there. And then two copies of Gofu. This is where he's able to link. 
Uh, I think it's really cool because you just, you know, GoFu just goes into your proxy, the tokens go into your proxy dragon, your proxy dragon and your GoFu go into your decode talker. So really, really solid. Uh, we know this card's either going to, uh, going to one or getting, uh, getting the ban hammer uh, next list. So we'll see. So that's it pretty much for all the main monsters. And then for the hand traps, we got just two Ash Blossom, two Ogres, and then the one God card, Max C. I don't really need to explain anything here. These cards are good. If you guys watch M. Cole Forty's one of his latest videos talking about hand traps and Yu-Gi-Oh, you guys will know. Outside of the Oblivious Maxi, like we already know, Maxi is the God card. Uh, Ogre is really something else, and Ash may not be that good right now, but in time, give it time. This card is great, and it will be great. It's also a really solid side deck card. And that's it for the monsters. Of course, it's monster heavy. On to the spells. Uh, three more agreed, and two pot of desires and an upstart goblin for your draw engine. Moray Greed is just insane. You're able to Moray back, mulligan basically, and just, you know, can you know fix your hand. I think that's just awesome. Desire says draw two, and upstart keeps the deck at 39. I think it's just really cool that you can play Moray Greed in the deck because being able to just draw, being able to fix your hands and do what you need to do and re-mulligan is just awesome. So uh, that's it for the draw engine. And then for the other spells, uh, two copies of Chalice. You guys already know Chalice is just insane this format. So solid against Dryden, so solid against uh, True Draco and everything. Being able to just Chalice them at the right time is the difference between you winning and losing. I think Chalice is just one of the best outs to Dryden uh, right now in addition to like Book of Moon and other cards like that. But I really, really like Chalice. Uh, just pretty much in any deck in Yu-Gi-Oh! right now. I think it's just a really solid choice. And then the one of he's got the one scale, you know, negate the spell. One red Geki because it's a board wipe. One one for one because it summons your prince. And the god card, Soul Charge. Uh, so that's it for the deck, you guys. It is 40 cards. And then to the extra deck. Uh, so for the rank 7s, we've got, of course, the Abyss Gaios. I haven't seen this card in a long time, thank God. I remember back in the day playing against it. It was frustrating to get over. You found your ways around it, but, man, like, setting that up early game was nuts. Now, like I said, you don't really go into the extra deck. I don't think you go into it as much, like, for the rank 7s, but I feel like when you do open up your link zones uh, with Deco Talker, you probably do have the ability to do more like that since you can stick Megalos and uh, Teuses on the board. Uh, along with that, we have Red is Flare Metal Dragon. Actually, I'm a big fan of that card. I feel late game, this is like one of the most solid cards you can make because basically anything your opponent does will burn him to death. They play, of course, one Draco Sack. He does have a real secret Draco Sack, but we wanted to be cool and show the ulti Jap uh, Japanese one. I think it just looks awesome. Uh, so yeah, so one Draco Sack. And then... Uh, one Dweller, obviously, Dweller is just amazing in this deck. You know, all your, you know, you're always going to get the boost, so it's solid. And then he is playing a one Dryden and one Broad Bull. Uh, in his side deck, he's playing uh, Winter Cherries and he's playing enemy controllers. So that's why these are there. You econ one of their guys, put a Broad Bull over, put a Dryden over it, and I mean, you know, it's just pretty much that's all she wrote uh, against any kind of zoo variant. So that's it for the XYZs. For the Synchros, I love the fact that this deck can Synchro. You have one Leo, just really solid. One Black Rose, ooh, Ghost. Black Rose, yeah, one Black Rose, uh, just nuke the board, you know, <laughs> reset button. One Coral Dragon, it's a solid six, it's also water. And then the one Herald of Arc Light and the one Tasunoku. You guys already know making these cards is just insane. It just opens up, you know, a lot of your plays. So I really like uh, this Synchro lineup. And then for the Lynx, it's very simple. Two Proxies and two Decode Talkers. Uh, you know, you just like off of Gofu, you can, it's a one card Decode Talker. You can even just go Proxy Dragon, Proxy Dragon and uh, Gofu. Uh, you know, make the Proxy Dragon off the tokens. That and Gofu make your Decode Talker. And I mean, just really, really solid. So you do have the ability to link summon you guys uh, if that's something you do want to do in the deck. I never, uh, you know, playing against Mermel, actually thought about them link summoning. I know as soon as the new support comes out, like we're going to see like a change in the deck. So we'll definitely keep you updated uh, on how the deck uh, evolves with the new support. But I just wanted to showcase something new for you guys, something that has not been on this channel before. Uh, and yeah, let me know what you guys think of my little brother's deck. Do you think that, uh, do you think it's solid? Is there anything you would change? Uh, you know, any questions, you know, leave them down below. I'm sure he'll be there to answer. I'll be there to answer. I just really like, you know, not only do I like how beautiful this deck looks, I like the fact that he stayed true to a deck he really enjoys. I know there's a lot of people out there that still love Mermel. There are people that are still playing it. It is always going to be the like one of those rogue decks, even now, that just will take the opponent by surprise. If they're not prepared for it, this deck is insane. Like, this deck can just turn out a lot of damage, and you can literally just lock your opponent out of the game. 
so quickly and just overpower them that I think it'll just always be a solid deck in Yu-Gi-Oh. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. Uh, any changes, any suggestions, what do you think will happen when the new support comes out? Just let me know in the comments below and I'll be sure to keep you updated as the deck evolves. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it, enjoyed something new, smash that like button, and thank you for watching.